hey this is deepak here and in this lesson we are going to have a look at how to create your content in such a way that it is friendly to the search engines and as well as the users so let's get started in general having a good user experience on the site is very important if someone visits your site and if he or she is not able to access your content with ease then you can say that it's obvious that the search engines will also not like it so you should always put the first preference to user experience and then you should look at how search engines will look at your pages as well so for example if you have a website which is loading very slow or if you have a website which is not optimized for mobile phones then it is very obvious that the users are not going to have a good experience some of the other things that you need to take care of you should not have multiple pages of the same content so you would have seen that certain websites have a very viral content you know it could be something like five tips to or seven ways to or 10 things and they will make it in such a way that all the 10 different things are available in separate pages and you have to click clicking next every time so that is not a good user experience and many people do it to increase their ad impressions and increase their page views to artificially kind of inflate the page views because it's the same user and if he is uh, seeing an ad or not seeing an ad it doesn't change with multiple page views so do not do pagination and do not block your content like for example you might have seen an exit pop up in my blog but this exit pop up comes only when someone tries to exit it does not block the content as soon as a visitor visits the website and there is no bad user experience there so in general these two things that you have to follow you should have a clear title for your blog post and then you can wrap your headings in h1 and h2 tags in general if you are using wordpress this is done by default because wordpress is very seo friendly and optimized for the search engines you can include the target keywords and make it occur in a natural way so there is no set percentage of what percentage of those uh, target keywords you should have on your website so if you are naturally writing an article about some topic like for example if i am writing an article about facebook ads and if i am writing a 2000 word article in a natural way the keyword density will be around 2 to 3 percent so that is the most natural way there are a few tools where you can check the keyword density so you can go ahead search for such tools on uh, the web go ahead include your article and include the target keyword so these tools will tell you what percentage of keywords you have take care that the keyword density does not go above 5% or 10% because then it would look very spammy to the search engines and there might be a risk of search engines penalizing your website if you are uploading images make sure you compress the images as we have discussed before and also make sure that the image names are relevant to the article that you are writing on for example if i am writing an article on search engines and if i am putting a screenshot in the blog post so here the file name of this image will also be something like search engines or seo or something related to that alt tags are something that you can set inside wordpress when you upload the image as well right side you will have an option to include an alt tag so in the alt tags so alt tags are basically uh, they are called alternate tags so when the image does not load the tags will have a description of what the image is about for example if i am including a screenshot of my google analytics search con or google uh, analytics or search console then i would enter the alt tag as google analytics screenshot or search console screenshot or something like that uh, make sure that the content on the page is rich in the previous video i showed you an example where for the keyword google adwords certification i am ranking on number 3 so inside this article you would have also seen that i have included a youtube video embedded a youtube video so if you include slides and videos what it does is that it gives richer content it gives more user engagement so the user is spending more time on your website and these are all good signals that is received by the search engines and they will be able to rank your pages higher create good engagement uh, make sure that the content is in such a way that the users spend more time Uh, you encourage the users to share it on social media and make sure that your web page also has a low bounce rate so if you have a very clear layout for your web page and if users can find what they need then users will spend more time on the site so here the bounce rate will automatically be low 
so google will track so some people say that google does not track all these metrics but many people many seo experts do say that google tracks these metrics through a variety of methods uh, they have the chrome browser they have google analytics with themselves uh, it is owned by google and there is also something called google safe search which is an algorithm that even firefox and safari use to kind of filter out the bad websites from the internet and there are some experts who claim that Google can also track metrics like time spent on site, the behavior on the site and things like that even if someone is using other browser and even if they don't have Google Analytics account. So that's about it for the other criteria that influences your on-page optimization. So let me have a, a look at my own website. I will show you one of my blog posts and discuss some of the topics that we discussed here on my page. So here I am in my blog. So what you see here is the SEO title, which is also the title which appears on the Google search result pages. And what you see here is the H1 tag title. This particular title can be different from this title and inside WordPress settings you will be able to edit that. And then subheadings can be in the H2 tags. So here you can see that these are H2 tags and those were H1 tags. And if you have an image, make sure that the image is actually having a name which is relevant for example here it is opt-in chat related image so i have made the image name as opt-in chat hyphen questions so the images should have the right alt tags and also the image name also matters so these are some of the aspects which govern on page seo and obviously your page should load fast your content should be of good quality so that people spend more time and make sure that you do not write content uh, trying to stuff keywords within your content uh, just naturally let the article flow and I believe that automatically the natural occurrences of the keyword will be spread throughout the article. So if opt-in chat is the keyword here and if I search for opt-in chat, you can see that there are 11 occurrences of opt-in chat and it's in a very natural way. So this was not intentional. I did not intend to place these keywords all over the article but it occurs naturally while I am writing the article because that's how natural language works. So that's about it for on-page uh, SEO. So I will also upload a bonus video where we will discuss about how to do SEO within WordPress blogs. And in the next module, we will discuss about off-page SEO.